Hello there guys, how are you doing? I am in Comrat, the capital of a country you've probably never heard of. It's called Gagauzia. It's right in the south of Moldova. And the local language that people speak is Turkish, or a kind of Turkish, called Galgazian. And who knew that they had such a beautiful cathedral? Look at that. St John the Baptist Church. Now of course when people think about like a secret country within Moldova, people usually think of Transnistria. Very well known, very well documented country, which I even visited in one of my videos earlier this year, but I wanted to come back to Moldova uh, to see this part of the country, Gargazia. And yeah, it's a bit grey, it's December, not a huge amount going on, but I thought we could have a little look around to see what's going on in this uh, city. So let's do it. Hello. People are friendly here. So in the West, we tend to think of Turkey as a Muslim country, but the Turks here, the Galgazians, are actually Christian people. As evidenced through their massive church with a beautiful golden dome in the main square. Look at this. And over here as well, there seem to be two different buildings. I'm not sure what the difference is between them. Okay, so this side of the church seems to be just an archway, a fancy archway. Don't think we can get in through there. But now we walk through the archway and we come out onto the main street of Comrat, and this is called Strada Lenin. So Strada from Romanian, even though they don't really speak Romanian here, Romanian is obviously the national language of Moldova, and they're still calling it Lenin Street. So of course, in many former Soviet republics, they've been going through kind of a de-Sovietization, taking away the names of all the Lenin and Stalin streets and all of these uh, other names associated with the former Soviet Union. But here they've decided to, for some reason, keep the name as Strada Lenin. And here it is, a hub of activity in this city of all about 20,000 people about the same size as Ely back home in the UK. So the language situation in this part of the world is actually very interesting. I've noticed the people between them, they speak Russian, but most of the population are of this uh, Turkish speaking language, so the Gagazian. And you do see a little bit of uh, Romanian around as well. So you've got some Romanian up here, look, where they're trying to instill the Moldovan nationality. So yeah, this is very interesting. So you've got service, patrimony, I guess it says the same here in Russian. And then you've also got some Gargazian symbol. So you've got a little bit of everything there, wow. But we are definitely 100% in Moldova. And do you know how I know that? Because they've got an Andes pizza, a national pizza chain of Moldova, where you can get a good meal almost wherever you are in the country. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the memorial to those who died defending the city of Comrat and the Galgazian region. So I'm outside a local school now and you can see here the flags of Moldova and Galgazia flying peacefully together. So you've got obviously the tricolor of Moldova and you've got this lovely blue, white and red tricolor with three stars on it, which I guess the three stars signify the three main cities in uh, Galgazia, Comrat and the other two main ones, which I've forgotten the names of uh, rather ashamedly. And I guess this is a good time to talk about why Galgazia didn't end up like Transnistria. Galgazia did declare independence just like Transnistria did in uh, 1990 when the former Soviet Union was breaking up. And for four years it was an unrecognized republic, but eventually a deal was struck with the Moldovans to become part of Moldova. And now they live peacefully side by side. And the marks of Turkish influence are quite obvious. Look at this building. Only built as recently as 2018, and look at this sign already, getting a bit rusty. No idea what it is, but you can also see just how different the three languages are here are. So you've got Turkish, and then you've got Romanian, and then you've got Russian. So you get the feeling this really is an incredible meeting place of cultures, where the Slavic, uh, where the Turkic, and the Romance languages and peoples come together. And it hasn't always been a, a peaceful history. And here's the central market. Okay, it's Wednesday. Nice bit of music. Local babushkas hanging around. Okay, it's not exactly the bustling market I expected, but there's plenty to buy. Oh, 
Well, they do say Moldova is Europe's poorest country, but you can still get everything you need. Look, even selling chainsaws in the market. Yeah, so that was the market. Obviously, you know me, I'm not going to buy any crap I don't need. But yeah, now we've come out into the back streets of Comrat. Look at this. Nice big house over there. Rickety old bicycle. Is that a larder up ahead? I think it is. And a dacha as well, the modern day larder next to it. Yes, it is. Look at that. I oh, know, obviously, I've just left Belgium for good. And I'm looking for a new place to call home. And Comrat's really appealing. Look at it. Love it. Wonder if they have a local school I can go and teach English at or something like that. Although I heard I was chatting with some of the locals last night and apparently the average salary is only about $250 a month around here. So I'm not sure it's too appealing if I want to carry on doing my travel adventures from that point of view. But hey, could be an adventure for a year or two, couldn't it? And of course, wherever you go, there are little signs telling you about visas to get to Europe in the hope of a better life. And look at that guy's boxes who I helped out. Look, he's uh, made me all a bit dirty. Getting into the rural life because it is very much a rural community around here. Comrat, it's the biggest city in this uh, conglomerate of uh, Galgasia. Only 20,000 people and there are about 150, 180,000 Galgasians in the whole world. Most of them, just over half, I think it's about 60% of them here in Moldova. Some of them over the border in Ukraine and then a few dotted around in other places. So you can kind of understand why they didn't fully go down the independence route because it's quite a small community and being dependent or at least in a union with a country like Moldova is probably a good idea for them uh, relying on their infrastructure a bit of support in that way in exchange for autonomy so they are an autonomous community I think they've got like 12 members of parliament uh, within the Moldovan parliament so they do have some representation these uh, Turkish speaking Moldovan Gargazians and something else I have noticed around here as well is that there are quite a lot of Bulgarian cars. There's a, a Bulgarian community right in the south of Golgazia. Actually, part of Moldova, not really Golgazia, but still in the region. And they live peacefully side by side, these Bulgarians. <laughs> so you might be thinking, Lloyd, OK, Comrat, is it really a country? Well, Comrat isn't, no, Comrat's a city. But Galgazia kind of is a country, so it was actually called the Republic of Galgazia, unrecognised, like I said earlier, for four years between 1990, when I was born actually, and 1994. And now, it's got this autonomous status within Moldova. So it kind of is a country, okay? I don't think anybody would truly say, oh, this is a different country. But it is kind of a country, I would like to say so. And they even uh, had a national football team which went to one of these non-FIFA World Cups uh, back in the early 2000s. And I think they got a draw against Zanzibar or something like that. So, yeah, there is a feeling of uh, some kind of Gargazian nationality. It's definitely not a very well-known country, let's put it that way. And it's interesting seeing the rural life here. Well, this looks like an old train carriage converted into a shed. I guess they were planning to build a house here and instead they've ended up with this little shack. Here's the very modest river which feeds these lands, the Yaguz. Wow. Eventually, I mean, flows at the moment seems like a bit of a, a generous term to use, but it does flow out into the Black Sea, which is where I guess the connection with Turkey comes from. Down here in this uh, slither of Moldova with uh, Ukraine to the east and Romania to the west. The dick truck. And this is where we are heading. As we walk across from Comrat over there, you can see the, the glorious lights. And actually, look, you can see the church even from here, beautiful golden dome. And we're heading up to the Vinery de Comrat, the winery. We're gonna try some more local Moldovan wine, let's uh, go have a bit, shall we? And this is actually what I would call the Comrat Ring Road. 
Comrade Ring Road. Um, but it's a bit of a strange one. I'll show you on Google Maps very quickly. If you zoom out, look, you can see it kind of goes three quarters of the way around. So it's kind of a ring road, but you come in from the north, you can drive all the way around it and then go out to the west. Very strange. Nice example of Soviet city planning, maybe, who knows? You can see just over there on that house, somebody proudly flying the Galgazian flag. So it is a nation, look, something to be proud of. I would walk along the footpath, but look, I feel like it looks maybe a bit less safe than walking on the road. Look at that, covered in grass, not been maintained for years. Winery of Comrat. Restaurant and terrace, open 12 until 11. It's been around 127 years, look at that. You know, Chateau Comrat. Ah, this is what I was looking for. It's in Romanian, so I can actually read it a little bit. Look, Sala de Degustare. This is where you go to try a bit of the wine, I guess. Okay, apparently I was going the wrong way. Let's uh, see where, ah, maybe it's over here. Nothing is particularly well signposted here. I've not seen much wine yet. Right, that's the restaurant. I don't really want to go in the restaurant. I just want to try some wine. Oh wow, look, I bet this is a lovely place to go in the summer. View of Comrat over these roofs. Oh look, they're doing something up here. I've definitely come out of season, haven't I? All right, let's try in the restaurant then. Hey, the music's a bit loud, uh, but there's no uh, tasting officially going on today, but they've said that I can try some in the restaurants. I've got three different red wines coming. Should be delicious. I love Moldovan wine. All right, let's try the first one. Oh, lovely, nice and light. No idea really what it is. Exactly. But it's good Moldovan red wine from the region, love it. All right, that was one of the most disappointing visits to a winery I've ever had. The wine was quite good, but there was no like real tasting experience or anything like that really. So I guess we're gonna go head back to Comrat now. That's what happens when you travel in Southern Moldova during the off season. Oh well, if you do wanna see me get really quite tipsy on Moldovan wine, go check out my video in Crickover earlier this year. That was brilliant. All right, back to Comrat. Oh, if only I had a larder I could drive. Here is where you go if you want to learn to drive in Comrat. Look, the little driving school area. You've got a little ramp, and some cones. No wonder the people of Moldova and especially Comrat are such good drivers. Look at that. This little dog to try and avoid as well. This sticker is from San Marino. Apparently, this car is from San Marino, even though it's got Moldovan plates. I mean, I know there are, there are lots of Russians who go to San Marino, but this seems highly unlikely. Someone's lying, I feel. Look at this, the central square filled up with cars like a car park. Well, I guess it is a car park. It's about as post-Soviet as it gets. Look at this. The central fountain, and it's run out of water. It was absolutely chucking it down this morning and still look. The babushka is holding up the fountain, I guess. And now here is the alleyway of Galgazian glory. Some of Galgazia's greatest people I guess written in Russian so I can't really read it but let's go have a look and nice to see unlike in other parts of Moldova like the Central Park in Chisinau there are some women Maria Marunovic Alexander Pushkin of course we saw him in Chisinau earlier this year also a link with Galgazia I guess Mikhail Eminescu one of the great writers of Romanian literature so what you can really see here is they don't just celebrate the Galgazians, they celebrate all kinds of people of all kinds of different backgrounds from the region. Dimitri Kara Choban, Nikolai Baboglu, a very Turkish name there you see, Baboglu, Dionis Tanasoglu, and over there is the university, the Comrade University. 
And something interesting I learned about the, the Galgazian education system is that despite being a majority Turkic speaking region, most of the classes are done in Russian. And there are just a few hours a week dedicated to studying the national language, the, the native language of the people here, Galgazian. And people seem to like it that way. People like that they can learn the Russian because it helps them communicate with the neighbors. Obviously, most Moldovans speak Russian as well. The Ukrainians speak Russian. In this part of the world, Russian very much is the, the language which helps people to communicate across borders, much like English in most of the rest of the world, I guess. And it would be nice to see this alley or more a boulevard, like a boulevard of heroes, I would call it, of Galgazian heroes. A little bit better maintained and look at what you've got at the end of this alleyway, look. Yeah, more evidence of just how lots of things in Moldova are left unfinished or pillaged. I mean, if you look this way, you've got a beautiful view down to St. John's Church. So not all is lost. Alleyway just has <laughs> kind of seedy connotations to me. It's definitely more of a boulevard, I would say. Just in need of a bit of love and care. Maybe it's just the time of year. Look, I'm sure these have beautiful flowers throughout the rest of the year, these plants here. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Obviously Nur Sultan now the capital city of Kazakhstan. So there's definitely very much still a Soviet connection, uh, a bit of Soviet nostalgia, let's say, especially when you consider that they haven't renamed uh, Lenin Street. It's still there now. Let's go see Lenin, shall we? So this is where the executive committee of the autonomous region sits. You can see, look, there's still a very Soviet looking logo at the top, the three stars of Galgazia. You've got the beautiful flag, just like the Cape Verde flag, Moldovan flag, and then over here you've got Lenin. You might remember when I was in Chisinau, they kind of uh, shuffled the statues out into a park outside the city. But no, Lenin still stands here in the middle of the city in all his glory. Look at that. And here it's like they want to move forward in a peaceful way, but not forget the past as well. That's uh, how it feels in this part of the country. A little bit of a different ideology, a little bit of a different way of thinking about the past and the future compared to the rest of Moldova. I also noticed on that very Soviet looking logo that there are uh, some crops some wheat on the wings of the logo. And why is that? Well, because Moldova really was one of the agricultural powers. Uh, it provided so much food for the Soviet Union, so many crops, and despite being the most densely populated, in fact, of all of the former Soviet republics, it was still very much an agricultural lifestyle. And Moldova would provide food all over the Soviet Union. And you can certainly see this in the rural kind of outlook, even here in Comrade, which is the capital city. And this is about as urban as it gets around here. You've already seen just how rural it gets. Less than a kilometer that way. But the people's Turkish roots are also very, very much present. You can see here Park Cafe with a Turkish flag, Turkish street food. But I think I want to try something a bit more Galgazian. Let's see if we can find something. Yeah, this is Zama chicken, traditional lunch here. It's pretty nice, under three pounds, less than, well, about three euros, lovely stuff. So there we go, Cafe Boulevard. Am I less than four pounds? Well, about three pounds 50 lunch. Nice chicken soup with red wine, love it. Right, one more place I wanna visit, if we can, before we head back to Chisinau. Because as much as, it'd be nice to stick around here a bit, there's not really that much to do. I got a flight in a couple of days, I don't wanna be stuck out here in the sticks. I'll look down here in this building, they've got a little chess tournament set up. Look, I guess it's the basement of a school. Chess still alive and well in the former Soviet Union. Welcome to the best bar in Comrat. The beer is very good. 17 lei, yes? Good beer. And you work here. My name is Dima and I very very happy because I uh, to meet with my friend. So come to D-Man's bar if you're ever in uh, Comrade, it's really good. Enjoy. Thanks, man. So that was D-Man in his little cafe, Office Beer and Coffee. So if you do ever come to Comrade, go to Office. Hey. Best beer in town. <laughs>
hey, goodbye, take care. So yeah, great place. Uh, let's get back, oh, look at this, over the road. So this is Pushkin Street. So they're loving Pushkin, all around here. Oh, let's all get run over. And look up here, wow. Decorated the building, Gargosian Pride. Look at this, lovely. Nice to see a building well looked after in this part of the world. I'm impressed. Gagalsia. So here look, Comrat to Istanbul. You can take a bus from Comrat to Istanbul, obviously a little bit more evidence of that Turkish connection going on. Here is the self-declared modern bus station where we're gonna find a bus to Chisinau, hopefully. We'd like to get back there tonight. That's a relative civilization. As I know it's customary in many countries to pay to go to the toilet, but look at this. It's cost me two lei, so about 10 cents, 10p, whatever you want to call it. It's still a bit, not in the best condition. Oh well. But I do have my ticket for the bus to Kishinev, so let's see if we can actually find it now. She sold me a ticket, 75 lei, which works out to about, ooh, £3.50, a bit less than that, for a two hour journey to the capital city. Could you imagine paying just that in the UK for a bus? Well, actually you can. Remember I found a bus to Bristol from London for 99p once, so you just have to look for the bargains, but that's like the general price here. That's how much the going rate is. Cheap as chips. So it looks like I found my ride to Kishinau. Beautiful Mashutka. So we're back in Chisinau. Let's uh, see how we get back to the city centre. It's been fun. Hope you enjoyed seeing a different part of Moldova, this uh, Gogal's kind of republic, whatever you want to call it. Take care, keep travelling wherever you are. From a cold, wintry, Christmassy Chisinau. Goodbye. And I can't believe how quick it was either. It was only an hour and a half. Yesterday, it took me two hours going in the opposite direction. That's obviously accounted for the dodgy roads you get in this part of the world. But we made it. You do get some weird drinks in this part of the world as well. Look, Coca-Cola plus coffee, vanilla flavor. Thought Coca-Cola was already like a coffee alternative, like caffeine, coffee alternative, whatever. But no, they've made Coca-Cola flavored like coffee and put vanilla in it as well. And it's not bad.